Hi guys, it's Jonathan Feist here with Charge.io, and we are on the set with Adam DJI. Lisper. Adam Lisper. <laughs> Sorry. You want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for taking some, some time to answer a few questions. With hey, us. no, glad so, to be here. Really, we're really excited about what we've introduced today, and I think you people are going to be really excited too to see about it. Well, they're jealous of you because you word. get to be here and hold these and touch them before they're even <laughs> available for the general public. We're getting them out as fast as we can to pick it up. He's holding the new Phantom 4 Pro. He's one of the luckiest guys on the planet right now. He is holding the familiar Phantom 4 body and interface, but with the new built-in camera with a one-inch sensor and the mechanical shutter to deal with your motion, to deal with your rolling shutter issues, and to give you incredible depth of field, incredible dynamic range. Um, and for, for those of you who are not utterly professional drone pilots, you will also notice that not only does the Keep spinning, keep spinning. Not only does the Phantom 4 Pro have your familiar uh, sensors on the front for uh, obstacle avoidance, but if you turn it around, you will see the same obstacle avoidance sensors on the rear, which give you the same kind of capability. And remember, these aren't just like, they're not just uh, dumb sensors. The, they, as well as the images on the bottom, shoot stereo imagery, and they use that to process a 3D map to know not only is there something in front of me, but if there's an obstacle approaching, how can I get around it? How can I navigate through it? And that makes functions like tap fly work, where you just tap on the screen and say, I want it to go there, or in our new mode, I want to follow the squiggly little line to get to that point. The obstacle avoidance sensors know all the way along, how can we accomplish that goal even if there are things in the way? And then for an additional level of safety and security as you're flying, we have these new infrared sensors on the side. They don't create a, a map, but they send out infrared pulses and measure the time lag when it comes back, the time of flight sensor as it's called. That lets you give yourself some lateral obstacle avoidance capabilities there. It's a profoundly improved drone from anything you've probably ever touched before. Um, nobody has these kinds of features out there, and it's on sale right now, and we're gonna be shipping them in a week. Now to the next step, the amateurs, if you will. Uh, this <laughs> thing almost flies itself. Tell us a little bit about this remote. Well, this doesn't. This thing almost well, flies itself. <laughs> you almost do not need this remote because. <laughs> <laughs> well, this remote, it, you know, it's a similar form factor to what you're used to with the Phantom series. But this version, the Phantom 4 Pro Plus, comes with a built-in screen, so rather than using your phone or your tablet and using a cable to wire it into the system, it has a built-in, it's, it's, it's basically a, an Android version of the DJI Go app in there. Um, this screen is high luminous, and it's designed that you can view it on a bright sunny day outdoors without having to look down at a screen like that. If you usually use your phone to fly the drone, you don't have to worry that it's gonna ring with an important call while you're flying. We don't want to drop it. <laughs> a much larger drone, much heavier drone. Dual battery packs to make up for that. And <laughs> they're hot swappable, correct? Correct. This is the X5S, one of the two new cameras that we have introduced to match to the Inspire 2. You know, clearly this is made for professional filmmaking, for live TV broadcasting or for, for other high-precision, high-performance professional requirements. I suppose if you've had a very good year, this could be a fun hobby drone. This would be a, <laughs> a very nice hobby drone. Right. Now, uh, certainly what we witnessed here today, and kind of our old knowledge on the Inspired line, uh, is that you kind of want two pilots on these things. Yes. Is that it's, still true? Yeah, th this is designed for a use case that we saw <laughs> repeatedly with the Inspire 1, where you could have a master and servant controller that would let one uh, let the pilot be flying the drone um, using the the view from the camera, while the camera operator is able to focus not on worrying about of obstacles and things like that, but is able to focus strictly on composing the shot, getting in close, getting the angles that you want, paying attention to your aperture controls and your other imaging controls. Um, and that is made extremely more capable with the yes. secondary front camera now. Yes. Up here you have a forward-facing FPV camera, it's a two-axis stabilized gimbal. That image displays on the pilot's controller. 67 you kind miles per hour, guys. 67 miles an hour. You kind of want to take full advantage of the obstacle avoidance sensors, so it, which are 
we're speaking generally here. Um, you want the obstacle avoidance sensors, which are forward facing, to be in effect. And you really want to be able to see where you're going, not just what the scenery looks like. So, tracking shot like that, the pilot is seeing the view straight forward and is able to fly appropriately based on that, while the camera operator can focus on the view from this camera. One last thing I'd like to talk about for sure is this USB port. Now, of course, you have your... Uh, That's a secret. That's a secret. That's it. Cut. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, there's a new USB port inside of this drone, um, of course, so with all of the developer tools, uh, you can plug in accessories. Our users are so creative and so enthusiastic that we can never imagine what kind of great stuff they're going to be coming out with. Um, it's, you know, our, one of the, seriously though, one of the tenets of our company is we are making this an open platform. This is not a closed system. We think our products are great, but we want people to be able to explore. Our software development kit is available for this right now, so you can... You know, we're, we're talking about filming. We're in Hollywood, we're in Burbank right now, but you know, we're on a movie set right now. So we're talking a lot about filming and TV. Um, but there are an awful lot of industrial users who need this kind of precision and power and accuracy. And they will be very excited to start writing programs that will fly this drone for the best possible surveying. Uh, looking for bad drainage spots in a farmer's field. Um, looking for coastline erosion, for example. Um, you know, all of the all of the uses that you need an aerial precision measurement system for, we want to we want people to be able to write that kind of software and put this to those kinds of uses as well. And do you imagine this drone being incorporated with uh, your new partnerships on the search and rescue programs? Uh, drone uh, you know, SAR, I believe it's called. Yeah, search and rescue. You know, it's a very big uh, business, and, and I mean, drones are literally saving lives already and we want to expand that as much as we can. One of the things that we've learned through very uh, rigorous academic studies that we've been doing in Europe is that it's not enough to just say, hey, there's somebody missing, I got a drone, let me put it in the air. You have to say, let's make sure that the incident commander knows there's a drone in the air. Let's make sure that whatever the drone discovers can be saved so we can go back and watch it later. That we mark what area it searches so that the next crew, when they come on, don't start searching the same area again. So that when things get complicated and hairy three hours from now, somebody can track and see what was done there. So it's search and rescue as a regular application is very software intensive. And um, this is an ideal platform because of the precision it gives you, the power it gives you, the ability to um, go exactly where you need to go, but still to cover a wide area in sometimes very rough terrain. So search and rescue would be a great opportunity to put this to use and really show the professional capabilities of drones. Excellent. And we have one more new controller, guys. This one does not have the built-in display. However, there's two new displays. Yes, we have two new Crystal Sky displays, which if you care about such things, they display at 2,000 nits of luminosity. That's long. Imagine 2,000 nits in your hands. I'm imagining that. <laughs> I have a flashlight. It's roughly that. Yeah. There you go. Anyways. Um, no, seriously, if you are, if it is your job to not only see what the drone sees, but to measure, but to be able to very precisely monitor color balance, uh, see what's in shadows, what's in light, to do all of the the nuanced and sensitive um, measurements in, in your mind's eye that you need to to frame a film that's going to look beautiful on the screen. You want that kind of luminosity even in broad daylight. That's what we're providing. Pre-sale starting. Tomorrow, correct? Or uh, it's on sale on now, sale. Okay. and uh, we're going to be shipping. We're first. We're going to be shipping uh, the bundle. There's a little price discount if you order it before January 1st. Um, but yeah, our factories are getting ready to pump these out and get a lot of people happily flying and filming. Very good, and that goes for this guy as well. Also, this guy's going to be shipping next week. Thoughts. I mean, it's obviously honest. for like professionals and prosumers. Prosumers is that the term? Uh, yeah. I mean, the new Phantom 4 Pro is Pro Plus. Totally for consumers. But it's inspired too. I mean, that was insane, right? And what I love that's a drone. It was crazy. 